Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Go check out my website at skyazrael.com for life coaching and mentoring. It's Sunday. I want to get into my study group for warriors. I got a lot of material to talk about, so let's just get into it. If you're new to the channel, you'll catch the hang of it. This is what we do every single Sunday. This is our study group. I want to talk about reality, talk about consciousness, I'm going to talk about perception. Let's start with reality. Reality is what I see, what I remember, and what I expect, what I anticipate from the world. That's reality. That's your personal reality. It's what you see, what you can remember, your recall, and what you're expecting, what your expectations are, your anticipations are. Oddly enough, our reality is limited especially by our sight. All of our senses, our five senses, are somewhat limited. But our sight is especially limited, and we get a lot of our reality from our sight. What I see. What I remember comes from what I see, for the most part, unless you're blind. Then your other senses kick in. But we only see 1% of the world. There's lots of studies done on this, lots of interesting tests done on this, and the way that our eye is shaped in this kind of roundish shape, I don't know if it's a perfect ball or not, but you have a focal point. Your focal point is really a pinpoint. That focal point of clarity, say if you have 20-20 vision, I don't, but that really only exists, say if you hold your thumb out and you look at your thumb, that's really the only point, that one specific point, that's where your 20-20 vision lies is just in that one spot that you focus on. Everything else around you is blurry. So you can track your eye around as you look and you're still only getting that little 1% clarity of the world. And you may look across the room at a bookshelf like I'm doing. And the rest of the room feels like it's fairly clear. I, I think I'm seeing in 2020 vision, but I'm not. I'm really only seeing 2020 vision in that circular little pinpoint in the the apex of the round part of our eye. That's where your pupil is. So, our perception is largely made up. Our reality is largely a blur. And we're working on memory. You can look out at a, a you know, from a plateau at some mountains and you're still just pinpointing. You think you're seeing the whole landscape. Everything is blurry except for one little spot that you track through. And then, and then your mind fits everything else together. It's just really interesting. Let's go on to the next one. Your perception... Let's talk about color. Your perception of color depends on your experience of the world, remember that, and the objects around the object that you're observing. So think about this. If you see something that's blue or red or green, you're looking at a plant that's green. The only reason why you think that plant is green is one, because of your particular experience of the world of knowing that plants are green, and two, it appears green because of the other objects around it, because of the contrast and the different colors of objects around it. Here's a test that they did to prove this. The blue dress meme, you remember this? It was a black and blue dress that depending on the background and depending how the meme was presented, to some people it looked either black and blue or gold and white. Some people just swore. That's all they saw was gold and white. In fact, that's what I thought I saw, was gold and white. And I showed it to my brother, and he said, no, it's black and blue. And we argued about it. How could you see black and blue? It's clearly gold and white. I've seen the real dress. You remember this meme? I've seen the actual real dress. The real dress in real life, you ready for it? It was black and blue. <laughs> so those of you who saw black and blue were seeing what it really was. However... The trick can be exposed. It's a trick of your eye. They can show this same black and blue dress on different backgrounds, and the blue part will look, appear to be white. The black part will appear to be a tan or a gold color, depending on the background. 
Nothing has changed with the actual dress. It's just the background. It's a fascinating trick of your eye. So color, when you're seeing colors, when you're looking around, what you see may not actually be reality. Let's talk about some other senses. Sound. Sound is what you pay attention to. Sound, they did an interesting test with sound. You may remember it. And it was just a little short, little uh, audio, audio recording of a voice. And the voice said a name. You can look this up on YouTube and you can listen to it and decide for yourself of what you're hearing. And some people heard the voice say the word Yanni. And some people heard the voice say the word Laurel. Yanni or Laurel. You can look it up and find the video and see what you think it says. Now, spoiler alert, I'll expose the, the trick. The track, the audio, the audio track, Yanni and Laurel, it says both. It says both. It says Yanni in a high pitch and Laurel in a low pitch. And whatever you pay attention to, whatever your brain is picking up, some people pay attention to high pitch things and some people naturally pay attention to low pitch things. Whatever you're paying attention to is what you'll hear. Now, the sound trick was a lot harder to expose to people as a trick. Because once you've heard Yanni, that's all you hear and it's really hard for you to try and hear Laurel. Whereas with, say, the previous example with the dress, we could put the dress on different backgrounds and expose the trick to you and you can see how the colors perceive, your brain perceives the colors to be different. But with the Yanni and Laurel, the sound experiment, that was a lot more tricky to expose to people. Your brain, once it really locks in on something, it's hard for it to, to switch what it's paying attention to. But that's what this is all about. What we're talking about is what you're paying attention to. Let's continue with it. Let's talk about pain. Pain is a construct. They say pain is all in your mind. Some people believe that. Some people can endure ungodly amounts of pain. But, but pain is real and pain is broken into two different aspects. There's real pain where I can cut off your finger. And I don't care how tough you are. You're going to sit there and be like, oh, my finger, my finger. <laughs> Everybody might have got his finger shot off in a, in a bank robbery, shoot out with the cops. But then there's perceived pain. And perceived pain isn't necessarily real. There's a test that they do with this. The tests that they do with these are fascinating. The test they do with perceived pain is they set up these little brass tubes that are not very long, the size of straws and the width of straws. And they're hooked up to wires which send a, a, a heat current through them, sends, sends electrical current to heat it up. So one tube will be hot and then the next tube will be cold and the next one will be hot. It'll be alternating like that. So imagine 10 or 15 tubes like the size of straws laying flat on a table, hooked up to wires, and they're alternating warm and cool. Not cold and hot, but warm and cool. And you can feel them. And part of the test is to feel them with your finger and to feel the, the difference between them. But then they tell you in the test, they tell you to take your whole hand and to put it down on top of all of the tubes at once. And everybody tested will, will, will pull their hand away in pain. Ow, ow, it hurt, it hurt. Now it can't hurt you because you can sit there and touch each tube and realize it's just a little bit warm, that one's a little bit cool, that one's a little bit warm. But your brain gets tricked with the cold and the hot signals to thinking it's pain. This is perceived pain. You will experience pain when doing this experiment and everybody who does it recoils in pain. But they're not experiencing pain. It's perceived, it's fake, it's not real. Maybe it is real. But there's no actual burn mark. You can't actually burn yourself. You can hold your hand over it and say, ow, ah, ow, ah, that hurts. It's all in your mind. I find this stuff fascinating. Let's move on to the next one. We're kind of running out of time. I have a lot to go over. Let's talk about consciousness. Consciousness is all of your sensory inputs. 
so we, we talk about what is consciousness. I'm, I'm conscious or I'm unconscious. Your consciousness is looked at as your waking state. And we define our consciousness by all of the sensory inputs, all of our five senses, and how we react to them. That's an important part of this, because you need to be able to react to your senses in order to actually have an internal experience. And that internal experience that we have, this reaction, is what we call consciousness. If you think about the brain, the brain is so weird. It lives inside of your head, and your head is closed like a dark box. There's no windows, there's no way out. The brain is stuck in there, and it's floating around in a fluid. There's no sound, it's completely dark, it can't smell anything, it can't see anything, but yet it creates this very detailed, complex view of the world. You think you're experiencing the world, but what you're actually experiencing is a whole bunch of electrochemical reactions inside a closed box. It's so weird. So, when we add perception and consciousness together, perception and consciousness are different parts, are, they're in different parts of the brain. And perception has a conversation with consciousness. You perceive differently than what you're conscious of. Sometimes we are conscious of more than what we perceive. And this is where your subconscious comes into play. Your subconscious can catch something that you don't perceive at all. And there's tests with this. There's this blind spot test, that's what they call it. And the blind spot test is real simple. Well, they'll put an object, uh, a picture on a black screen, and you're fixed, your eyes looking straight at it. And in the experiment, you have, you know, you have your peripheral vision. And then you have just beyond your peripheral vision where that's your blind spot. And in the blind spot, in the experiment, they will introduce a second object. So you're staring at one object, and in your blind spot, they introduce a picture of a second object. And then they take it away. And there's a whole list of, a, a whole selection of items on a table and you're instructed to point out the item that you think you saw. Even though when they ask you, and you're staring at the one object on a black screen, and the experimenter will ask you, do you see this object? And every time the person being experimented upon says, no, I don't see it. And then they're told to look on the table, and they can pick out the object. So if it's a wrench that's put into their blind spot, and say they're looking at a flower, but a wrench is put into their blind spot, and they're asked, can you see this? The person will say, no, I can't see anything. And then they're told, okay, here's a, a, a bunch of items on a table. Pick out what you think. Just take a wild guess. What do you think you saw in the blind spot? What do you think was in the blind spot? A hundred percent of the time, people can pick it out. So this proves that you're conscious of more than what you are uh, able to perceive. And our brain filters out the world. It filters out almost all of the world on purpose to keep us from getting confused, to keep us from, from freaking out, from rolling, out, rolling around the ground with too much sensory overload. So where does this lead us? We have to move forward. R reality is the relationship between consciousness and perception. You see, we've been talking about these three things. Reality is the relationship between your consciousness of the world and how you perceive the world. So let's end on this one. The video's getting long. I have a whole other page of this stuff, but we gotta end somewhere. This is gonna fuck you up. All of your memories are incorrect. Memory recall is always inaccurate, and it's on purpose. It does this on purpose. Your brain does this, and you don't even notice. You may think that you can remember an experience the same way each time. You do not. You do not. A healthy person does not. A healthy person, a healthy mind, will add information almost every single time. Every time that you go and recall an experience, you're changing that experience. Somebody who is stuck in the past, who has trauma from the past, is not able to do this. 
they're actually remembering it the same way each time and that keeps them stuck in the past this isn't an opinion this is scientific stuff here I wish I could go further but we're out of time thanks for watching